Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. There's another paid request, this time from One True Misfit. Uh, any request should be sent either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And he wanted me to do a commentary on Sling Blade. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I've only seen this film like maybe once before. I remember not minding it, but it's a pretty lengthy film, 2 hours and 14 minutes, so... Probably going to run out a lot to say by very quickly, but we'll, hey, we'll, we'll see. But 3, 2, 1, pressing play. Again, I've only seen this film once, so I can't say any history or memory or why I love the film or anything. Because we saw the old Miramax logo. Man, Miramax, that's... Because that went to the Weinstein Company, and we all know what happened with the Weinsteins. One in particular. But yeah, Miramax at this time, you had films being released by them like Chasing Amy, and. Was Shakespeare in Love Miramax? For a while there, they were the toast of the town. But if you want really dramatic, heavy work, go into mirror maps. And of course, this is a film very much by Billy Bob Thornton. He directs the film, he stars in the film, he wrote the film. And this is definitely the film that brought him into the limelight. Now this guy here. I can't believe I forgot his name. J.T. Walsh. <clears throat> I recognize him. He's no longer with us sadly. But J.T. Walsh. He's, he did a lot of stuff. He was in Stephen King. Needful things. He was the villain. Kurt Russell's breakdown. He was in... Uh, a bit of an outbreak, quite a bit of other stuff. Good character actor. He was the negotiator with Samuel Samuel Jackson. Yeah, from the chair scraping, we'd already tell this is an annoying motherfucker of a character. And you can tell by uniforms, it's a mental hospital of some sort. And there's Billy Bob Thornton. Very different look. I mean, after seeing him for so many years, you look back in here, I can barely tell it's Billy Bob Thornton with the haircut, the way he makes his face. That st stature. But yeah, Bill Bob Thorne, I mean, he was doing bit roles before this. He was in Tombstone. Kurt Russell slapped him in the face. He was one of the guys Steven Seagal killed in Undeadly Drowned. <laughs> I didn't, before this, he would just get these bit roles. He was in the film called One False Move, I believe, with Bill Paxton. But, yeah, he, I believe that was what it was called. But, yeah, the, I guess it's one of those where no one was really giving him the roles he wanted to. So, he's like, fine, I'll write the role. I'll write a good role for myself. And then soon after, you would see him in Armageddon, and let's see, of course, years later, Bad Santa, The Bad News Bears. He was an Eagle Eye. Almost forgot he was an Eagle Eye. Pretty much J.T. Walsh just telling this really dirty story. And Billy Bob doesn't really want to say anything. Doesn't talk of anything.
Nelson. Doesn't got that southern fry, I tell you, they're going on the uh, with the, in the south. Y'all sit down, nigga. From what I remember, I think this does replicate the end of the film where he's in the hospital again, and only oh, this time he he ain't going to take J T. Walsh's shit. So he shows that he did learn a bit of something from being on the outside for a bit. <laughs> Sorry I'm not saying anything. I don't really know what else to say about this scene. Just JT Walsh going on and on about his escapades. Okay, so we got two girls for a school newspaper. Want to interview Billy Bob's character. Those motherfuckers probably cheating at chess over there on the down left. One motherfucker's like sleeping. <laughs> He's like, I fucked this chess game. He just fell asleep. Sorry, I'm just watching it. But again, I've only seen this film like once, so it's kind of like watching it for the first time. I probably first saw it probably like three years after it came out on VHS. Step outside, you're too big. Your tits are too big, lady. You need to step outside. Can't have two women in your... <laughs> it's like, fuck, no, I, don't have, I can't see the right. Look how fucking dark it is. Please let the lamp be near me. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be able to see shit to write in this fucking dark.
Yeah, Billy Bob's performance is definitely one that people have mimicked and or mocked or made fun of or but it works for the type of character it's supposed to be. Mm hmm fried taters and yo mm hmm Don't get down to the south there, mm hmm Gonna play with some taters for the aliens and UFOs, mm hmm Save for myself. I said maybe I'd do the rest of the commentary with that little action on mm -hmm. Yep. They chilling out there. I don't know how you're gonna see with all this dog dang fucking light in here. Wait, there ain't shit in here. Mm -hmm. Nothing in here. I could just zip by and fly down, do the tire whack of dance. Mm -hmm. Them all right. An old man named Dixon. Very cool about them fellas down there. But that ain't in your bar, rotting on him. Uh huh, oh yeah. Hmm. Hmm. About kid who took advantage of girls and more so. So this kid at school kept doing stuff to girls. That was what we'll start talking about his mom as well. Thought the guy was attacking his mom who was naked on the floor and saw red. He decided to have some fun with a sling blade with town on the motherfucker. So the whole scene is shot in this one standard, well, as soon as I say that, there's a cut to the girl's face. As soon as I say something about, oh, it's a static shot, then it starts cutting to other shots.
Hmm. Pretty much killed the younger kid who was messing around with his mom. Thought the guy was raping his mom. After killing him, the mom's like, why'd you do that? Realized the mom was cheating on his dad, so... Did her in. Iraq, I got no reason to kill nobody. Mm hmm. Well, I guess is for a performance like that, it's a bit tough how you can do it without people laughing at you because there's a lot of ways that you could do that. There'll be. Looked as over the top, goofy, silly, and uh, rife for parody. And I think Billy Bob, he, there's a certain genuineness to his performance where he's committed to it. So it's not like, hey, look at me, look how redneck I am, or whatever. It just, that's just how the character is. Just becomes the character. With the accent, you know, the way he's moving his hands, stuff like that. To embody the character. Which, Billy Bob didn't really do that again. Usually after a point, he kind of just played... Billy Bob. Like his name, Billy Bob Thorne, just played kind of another version of Billy Bob. Whether it be Armageddon or Eagle Eye, it's just kind of another version of himself. Or maybe ramp up a bit with some curses like Bad Santa or Bad News Bears. But I can't I don't can't think of another movie where we really embody a character like this. Definitely very unique. Ah, uh, now we get the opening credits. Sling Blade. Guy's pants all the way up. Up to his belly button. <laughs> Just waiting for a flood or something. Pass by the barber shop there. But oh, this is like the area around here. Just <laughs> interesting shot where. I guess it's supposed to be a car, but it pretty much just passes by and Billy Bob just looks at the camera. But never cuts away to like a car passing by. I mean, I guess we're to assume it's a car passing by, but the fact it never cuts to an actual car. Bit weird. I mean, I guess granted I got the idea of it, but just as I just looked at the audience. I guess it's him looking over the place because he probably hasn't been here since for decades.
<laughs> Definitely a bit of awkwardness there. Damn, a large french fry for 75 cents? That's a good fucking deal. <laughs> Try to get them McDonald's. Fuck, cross you. Oh, two something. Almost, almost three dollars. This kid, uh, I think I would see him. I should try and think if he's the same kid. See the same kid that was on this TV show called American Gothic, and then he was in uh, a bit role at the beginning of X Files the movie. If so, then he might be the same kid who would be in Fast and Furious Three, Tokyo Drift. Yeah, it might not be, probably not right about that. That's crazy. They let him out and they didn't even find him a place to stay and live. <laughs> Is that well, you know, like how much money does he have? Ah, oh, fuck it. Just let him lose. You would think they at least find like a, a place from the stay for a bit. But at least this seems like, you know, a nice nature to, you know, this Carl character. I'm trying to think what year does this take place in. I think it said a year. Did it say 78? No, I can't remember. I know this came out. got a lot of award recognition and review recognition. Probably to this day still. The performance he's the most well known for. Well, I, I don't know about nowadays. I think when people nowadays say Billy Bob Thorne, they think of Bad Santa more. I don't know. It's either Bad Santa or this. Like, this was the more award recognition, but Bad Santa is, like, the... Of the films he starred in, that's the film that seemed, like, the most... Financially successful when he's the, the lead. I mean, the biggest film, technically, he was in was probably Armageddon, but...
Dude, you're his doctor. You don't know if he has anybody or not. You're his fucking doctor. You would think you know, well, he's been here since, what, 12? Or whatever? I mean... Well, you're pretty shitty at your job when you're like, well, you don't have anybody down there? What the fuck do you think? thought you were his doctor. Pretty much this scene here is him wanting to go back and live in the hospital with him. It's like, you can't. <laughs> we let you out. And pretty much find him a place to stay. You keep asking him the same fucking question. No, he doesn't have a place to stay, buddy. You were his doctor. Wouldn't you know this shit before you let him out? <laughs> yeah, I'm letting out a murderer. I mean, I don't know if he has anybody to stay. and Maybe stay in the fucking bushes for all you know. Mom, a dad, and a daughter. With the place burning down? <laughs> From the outside, look, the place was burning down. I don't know. I thought, that, thought there was fucking smoke in something. Even that little bit here is nice, consider if him wanting to straighten out the, the bed sheet, even though he didn't sleep on it. Nice little detail there to show that this is a character that, despite his violent past, you know, does care about the little things. I've never been good with cars, so I wouldn't know what the fuck the make or model of any of these cars would be. I barely even know the color. Like, would you call that gray or what the fuck? I know it's a four door. That's it.
sorry I'm not saying anything. I'm just sort of listening to the dialogue. I don't really have... Like I said, I don't have a personal connection. I believe One True Misfit, it's one of his favorite films. Might be his favorite film of all time. Be like, well, why, why did he ask you to commentate on a film? Well, because he requested it and he asked. and um, I'm fine with it. I think I told him... It was hard to do because I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to be like, wow, I requested this and this is what the fuck Matt did. What a piece of shit commentary this is. And I think that's why I get agitated with myself. Just, I know I'm doing a shit job. I want to do better, but I don't know how. <laughs> well, got himself a job and a little place to stay. <laughs> and there you go. I was wondering what they were doing. Yeah, I've heard that joke a lot about the the two people piss and one says it's cold. The other guy goes, "Yeah, it's deep too." And you do figure out why it is. Yeah. In the middle, I'm like, "Oh, it's that joke." Oh, okay, I did. I don't know what movie first had that joke in it, but again, that is a joke I've heard quite a few times. So. I think he's eating more french fries. Can't blame him. I'm a sucker for french fries. Especially McDonald's fries. Believe me. If I could, I'd have McDonald's fries every fucking day. It's not good for you. Nothing's good for me. Nothing good for you. Nothing good for everybody. Doesn't matter. I don't... Most of us... Let's face it. Most of us are not going to live by 80 years old. Let's be fucking honest. And life is fucking short anyway. I'd rather eat what the fuck I want to eat. Um, I wouldn't want to be fucking 80 years old anyway. Walk around with a fucking diaper. doing all, Unless you're rich. I mean that's the thing. Yeah if you're rich then sure. Then you do whatever the fuck you want. I don't have to work. I can go pay a million dollars and go exercise every day. It's like, well, most people don't have that luxury. <clears throat> they just don't. But anyway. Oh, is this the, the little kid? Yeah. I think Lucas, I believe his name. The dollar store, huh? Damn. 
I thought it said the beginning it was like 1978. Maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's supposed to be the modern time when this came out. Well, it's definitely a movie that takes a little bit of time to get going. I mean, I get this trying to establish the characters, but, you know, we're like 37 minutes in and there's not really a story so far. It's mo mostly, hey, here's this guy and, uh, you know, but I guess it's sort of learning more about this guy <laughs> Sorry, I'm just watching because there's John Ritter, which of course him and Billy Bob Thornton were in another movie together, Bad Santa. Sally, they didn't share any. Well, I just no, they did share scenes, not too many, but they did share a few scenes. But yeah, bad. I miss John Ritter. Always a great actor, great character actor. I mean, back in the day, three company TV show, which I didn't grow up much. I heard of the show, I just didn't watch much of it. I did grow up with him in movies. The movie I saw the most was Stay Tuned, which I think is a very underrated comedy directed by Peter Hyams. Stay Tuned is very fun, but I also remember from the miniseries Stephen King's It and a few other stuff as well, but like I, rev I watched Skin Deep, I liked that one. Uh, Real Men, that was a fun one with him and James Belushi. He were large, I saw. It was okay. Mainly for John Ritter, but it's it's okay. But yeah, I, I miss John Ritter, and I mean, he was doing that TV show, which I never did see, A Simple Rules. Um, I never did get to see, and now I'm not sure if I will want to see it, because it'd be sad, because he died in the middle of making that show. But uh, Sally, when he got into the 90s, 2000s, other than stuff like Stay Tuned, he didn't get to seem like he didn't get to do a lot of movies. I mean, I guess he was in Bride of Chucky, which I'm not a fan of that film. Uh, or Bill Rose, like Bad Santa, which he was fun with, fun in that. But not a lot of like big roles as a star in the. The 90s. I just, just sadly, the films he starred in just didn't do well. I mean, Hero at Large, Real Men, Stay Tuned, they, none of them did well. So, when they don't do well, they don't hire you anymore. I think he was in a TV show called Hooper Man, where he played a cop. It's like a comedic drama show. 
I would like to see that, but I don't know. I couldn't find a watch, and I I think there's DVDs of it, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to buy a, a whole TV show on DVD just without knowing anything about it, you know. <laughs> So the kid's talking about his stepfather who some mean guy. Mean drunk. Yeah, you'll never see, you'll ever hear this dialogue in movie today. <laughs> Which the dialogue is not meant to offend people. The dialogue is just how people were talking and the it's the intention. The intention is yes, this person is gay, but they're a very nice person who the kid wishes that I wish that guy was my father, not my drunk mean stepdad but see people will misconstrue they people just twist that around and try to cancel it just to get fucking brownie points Yeah. So I try and read the title of the books. Obviously, one's a Bible. I couldn't tell what the other said. So definitely establishing he's good at fixing stuff. He's a good handyman. definitely establishing this guy's a <laughs> yeah this guy's definitely a piece of shit <laughs> is that think Dwight Yoakum is 
Let's see, I'm looking up some info on the film. Let's see. Let's see. The film was adapted by Billy Bob Thornton from his previous one-man show entitled Swine Before Pearls. For which he developed a screenplay for a 94 short film, some folks call it Slim Blade, directed by George Hickenlooper. But then he wrote, directed, and starred in this. And it won Academy Award for Best Writing, Adapted Screenplay. And Thorne was nominated for Best Actor. Huh, this film, it was filmed in 12 days. It's pretty fast. 12 days is pretty fast. Let's see. Yeah, do I yoke Lucas Black? That's the the kid's name. Yeah, Lucas Black. Yep, yeah, he was the star of American Gothic TV show Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Um, oh, he's on a TV show, NCIS New Orleans, 2014 to 2020. And yeah, it was at the beginning of the X-Files, the movie, the first one. He was in Crazy in Alabama, Ghost of Mississippi, Jarhead, Cameo in Furious 7. I guess he's in Fast and Furious 9. Yeah, John Ritter passed away in 2003. See, so looking at his filmography. America Thon. I saw the trailer to that. I haven't seen it. Hero and Large was okay. Like I said, Real Men Stand True. I forgot he was in Problem Child. I forgot the Problem Child movies. Stay tuned. Oh god, he was in North. Forgot about that. And this in 96. After that... Uh, film called Hacks. Film called Montana. Panic. Oh yeah, Bad Santa posthumously released final live action film. He did. Huh. <coughs> Let's see. Cost one million dollars, made twenty four million, ninety six percent Rotten Tomatoes. You will see what's coming, but the masterful performances, especially Thornton's, will leave you riveted.
This is just a uh, 8.0 on IMDb. Pretty high rating. Billy Wilder once told Billy Bob Thorne that he was too ugly to be an actor and that he should write a screenplay for himself where he dare exploit his less than perfect features. After this has launched his career, Thorne publicly discussed his conversation with Wilder, which was at a cocktail party. Wilder invited him to his house and said he didn't recall a conversation but was glad he heeded his advice. As a gift, Wilder gave Thorne a paperback copy of this movie script with his autograph and a personal message inscribed on it. In order to make his walk more awkward and consistent, Billy Bob Thorne placed crushed glass in his shoes. Interesting. Billy Bob Thorne invented the unique facial expressions and speech patterns he did and ad-libbed the entire Slim Blade speech at the beginning of the film while looking at himself in a makeup room mirror waiting to film his scene as a train conductor and the man who broke a thousand chains in 1987. His scene was later cut from that film. Carl was named after Billy Bob Thorne's special needs cousin who died a month before Billy Bob wrote the movie. Well, that's too bad. Harvey Weinstein, co-chairman of Miramax, only saw the first 30 minutes of the movie when he agreed to pay $10 million for the rights to the film. He later regretted this and forced Billy Bob to cut about 20 minutes from the movie. Okay... Didn't the kid already tell him this? <clears throat> 
This is John Ritter and Billy Bob Thornton talking at a cafe. Huh. I know it's on the table. There's only mustard. There's no ketchup. Where? That's weird. There's no ketchup. But I know it sounds stupid. That's a nice little detail. Like the mustard is halfway empty. Because a lot of times people be like, oh, fill it all the way up. It'd be like, well, wait a minute. It's filled all the way up. Like somehow they got the table where the mustard is all the way. It's just a little details. Like, okay, this is a, almost a little history with this environment. Definitely an interesting haircut they gave John Ritter as well. Things of the French fries, right? Can't remember. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna give a shit about your deep thoughts or Jack Handy type of stuff. God, uh, Dwight Yoakam here, just a real creep son bitch. Because I do remember where this leads to. I mean, it probably does seem obvious from the deck growers leading to where he's not comfortable being the outside. Either sooner or later, he's going. He wants to go back to the state house. No, if there's a reason to do that, it's killing someone. And who's the one person to kill? This, this motherfucker. He killed his motherfucker. The kid and his mom are happy. He did a good thing. And he's back where he's more comfortable.
So do I? Oh, what well, I'm towards do I Yoda in real life is a uh, deals with music. I guess they put a little bit of that into the movie. I will say though, I mean, I don't mind the film so far for the performances. I can't really say it's the most exciting, thrilling film. It, it does seem like a movie that even in this state does need a bit of an editor. I think it's a bit too gradual of a play of a pace. Well, this is just a bad idea, ready to run rampant. Okay. <clears throat> now this guy with the beard, I think I remember him on TV show Home Improvement. He might have been a few other movies, but... I swear the guy with the long beard, the ZZ Top beard, I remember seeing him on the TV show Home Improvement quite a few times. Maybe it's not him, maybe it's someone else, but... Yeah, and I'm sorry I'm not saying much, but it's just like pretty much Dwight Yoakam's band are just fucking around in some guy's living room, just it's just Yeah, the Billy Bob and John Murray kind of look how like I feel. Listen to this guy's lyrics. Just a fucker with the medulla obligata. Who gives a fuck?
is this whole thing really needed with this movie? To see Dwight Yoltyn's band just... So all of a sudden Dwight Yodum just got pissed and yelling and screaming, telling everybody to get out. Which I guess is the point to further showcase how much of an asshole he is. Which to be honest we kind of already gathered already but... It's not a bad scene, but it does seem like a scene that would be in the deleted section of a DVD. Yeah, even his bandmates fucking hate his ass. Take the guitar and smash him in the face honky tonk man style, for fuck's sake. Well, I mean, it's definitely a scene that does showcase the intensity of Dwight Yoltyn's character, and... Sort of that awkward point with uh, Billy Bob's character, like, he doesn't know what to do. Kids definitely stay in them for himself. I'll say that. I mean, I guess that's the point that it seems like it's funny games than how it turns you know serious like this. Get the fuck out, man. Well, I mean, if there's any scene to establish, you know, what kind of person Dwight Yoltrim is, is definitely the one that does it.
Hmm. Yeah, sorry I'm not saying much. I've just I've been more like watching the film because again I haven't seen this film since probably probably was around two thousand. Definitely got the old set design back in the background, more orange look in the wood, wood panels. I just in a weird way the set design almost has a timeless quality. It could be, I mean, it could be the 70s, it could be the 90s. Oh, he's trying to tell the, the joke again. He doesn't get the joke right, though. <laughs> he's trying to tell the joke that he heard before about the the water, the pool thing. You know, one's cold, one's deep. That old joke. Yeah, that's true. If you only sleep an hour or two, you wake up. It seem, does seem like you feel worse than uh, if you just stay up. I don't know how that is. I guess it's kind of like... Uh, I guess in a weird way to think of a computer. Like a computer, if you do a proper shutdown, like, that's fine. But if you just hit the power on and off, pop, pop, pop do it improperly then your computer gets fucked up and She took a lot better than I thought when she heard the truth, I'll tell you, say that much. I noticed he said he wouldn't hurt her or the son, but she didn't, I mean, he didn't say anything about Dwight Yoakam's character. Definitely take care of business with that motherfucker.
<laughs> I mean, I would say so far I don't mind the film. I didn't for the, the performances. And in the melancholic music does fit with the tone of the movie. Um, I mean, the shots are fairly basic. There's nothing too fancy about the, the shots in the movie. It's definitely a methodical, slow pace to it, which is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I mean, it's not that I hate the film for that, and far from it. It's just... Just going a little bit too slow for my taste. Just a little bit too slow. It's like... You know, the fact there's like an hour left in the movie, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Ain't got no gas in it. Take a walk tonight. What, did you just try to put him on a date or something? I don't give a fuck about your feet hurting, lady. I'm sorry your feet hurt. It ain't my fucking problem. I mean, I guess the whole point of it is just to really showcase his, I don't know, growing care of this sort of little family unit he's gathered himself in and his 
life that's slowly gathering uh, within this group. Sorry, now I'm watching, like, now there's this love story happening, which I'm not sure if I buy, really. And not really sure if this is needed. Because I know ultimately what's going to happen with the film is that he's getting tired of the abuse that the lady and her kid are getting from this asshole. And he's going to take matters into his own hands. I guess because, again, I'm just looking at, there are things you could cut from this film. I think, I do think this whole... Again, the actors are not bad, I just, I don't know if this is... Really needed, I guess... I guess really in retrospect to give the character, you know, as close as he can get to a love on that fashion before by the end he's got to go back to the hospital. Just definitely he's a, someone who's never dealt with that, never been through it. So this is to be the, the only time. So I did, that's probably why it, it's in this. Yeah, the bond between these two, definitely, there is a development, so it doesn't feel like it's half-assed or comes out of nowhere. A definitely similarity where, you know, the kids being abused to an extent, and more than likely that happened with Billy Bob's character. So in a way, maybe he could see himself in this kid's voice, demeanor, what have you. Hmm. 
So pretty much for Billy Bob's character, his parents had another kid was pretty close to stillborn. It was barely alive. And the father just gave it to him and said, just bury it. So yeah, he was only six, seven years old when that happened. So he buried it, even though he was barely alive, because he didn't want to go through the abuse that he went through. And again, he was only six, eight years old, so couldn't do anything about it. Not too bad lighting. You see the lighting just right across the eyes of Billy Bob's character. You definitely know that it was done on purpose. Especially since he's the, the director. Definitely a certain spotlight on his eyes. And there's Dre Yoakum back again. Let's see, without the end credits, we probably got about 40 minutes left. Okay. See, Dre Yoakum wants to stay there for good. Usually, we pass back and forth. What the? Okay, yeah, she's got a name tag. Oh yeah, she works at the store.
But if you don't like any of that, then why the fuck are you there? Just leave. Get the fuck out of Dodge. But I mean, this kind of stuff happens all the time everywhere. So. Passing the buck. Passing the blame. It's always someone else's fault. Not yours, because you're sorry ass. Pop your finger out of your asshole, dude. I was going to pull out like a car part to fucking propose to her. You garburator. Mm-hmm. Won't you marry me? Ride carburetor corridor all the way down Tennessee. Buy your time. Sure. <clears throat> you know, sadly, it's a mom who means well, but sadly, she's in the state of affairs where trying to let things get by day by day, hoping that something will change on the drop of a hat from the sky. Hope they're paying him a shitload because he seems like he's doing all the fucking work. <laughs> you have three people standing around with a thumb up there as they could do something. This is just trying to think like Guess he overheard those guys talking about football, so now he's playing a bit. That was some decent location. I mean, nice showcase of the trees and definitely does showcase the the rural outdoor nature of this. Is it Arkansas, was it? It does pants all the way high to kind of like Steve Urkel. <laughs> it was the white Steve Urkel. I don't know about this music. It's a bit like this. Almost like choir music. Hmm. 
He's doing it. Oh, this is probably his dad, right? This, they didn't mention his dad was there. Yeah, I don't know about this music. This music's a little bit on the nose, a bit over the top. I'm not 100% sure on it. Well, I mean, it's not bad music. Like, this part is not bad music. Oh, is that where he buried his brother? Might have been. Yeah, that might have been where he's buried his brother, yeah. Damn, fix that fucking screen door, man. Damn, this place is a fucking mess. Look at shit all here. Definitely a dirty ass place. <laughs> I think someone's ready to be evicted or something. I just am, it's like. What was you talking to? Imaginary dog? <laughs> Oh, it was Robert Duvall. I forgot Robert Duvall was in this. That for some religious per paraphernalia above them. And a shitload of alcohol next to them. I just really, in retrospect with the story, it's sort of a a person living the ups and downs of his life before he goes back to being in the, the hospital for the rest of the life. Paper stuff about how hmm. 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 about how his baby brother never got a chance to live and all that stuff. Yeah, and his dad, Robert Duvall, is just out there anyway. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's probably where his brother's at. Hmm. But I was saying like this is pretty much his you know, gaining friends, falling in love, working a job, making peace with his well his way of confronting his dad, making peace with his baby brother who passed away. And then the the for, final portion will be to do the wonder deed before all that. About 30 minutes left with in credits. Say in credits about 4 minutes, so that's 26. Uh, then about 5 minutes to it's 20. Probably 10 minutes to build up. It's a nice shot seeing the hammer silhouetted on the door. <laughs> He's ready to bash your fucking brains in, you fucking piece of shit. I told you, it'll bash your fucking brains in and see if there's any brain cells in there. About as empty as a fucking empty. Prindle can. So he's going to get baptized. I mean, I, with religion, I'm one of those guys I want to believe. Uh, you know, say your prayers, the cross, all that. Yeah, I want to believe. And, but also sometimes I wonder if God's like, what are you doing? What are you dumping yourself in the water? I don't care about that. Just be a decent person. You know, I do sometimes wonder about that, but, uh, but he got baptized, got dumped in there. They made some, lazy fuck. Yeah, it's definitely when <clears throat> one or two events to definitely lead up to the, the planning of our finale. I thought you told me my foot in your ass. Throw your life away.
Yeah, what's weird about them? You steered to death of me, fucking pussy. You knew this guy would tit the shit out of you. This guy's an idiot, too. Like, this guy's bigger than you. You know he's killed before and you want to push him. Fucking moron. And this lady ain't gonna do shit. Hmm. Seems like right here is some deep down contemplating what he's going to do. Hmm. By saying that, hey, you're a good mom and good kid, and kind of like contemplating what he's going to do. You know, sacrifice his own freedom in order to, to do all this. I probably probably in the I don't know why I'm stuttering, but Definitely looks at him as a father figure.
Yeah, I think this is again another further inclination that definitely going to turn another corner. I'm not saying I would see it, but I'm surprised there's not a sequel. I'm not saying there should be a sequel. I'm saying I'm surprised there isn't one where it's like an older Lutus Blatt mean this guy in the mental asylum years later still keeping in touch with letters or some stuff I'm just saying in this world where they sequelize fucking everything I am definitely surprised I mean fuck they sequelize Bad Santa Bad Santa too they sequelize I don't say they don't really do that to a lot of awards movies, but that's not true. I mean, you get Godfather 2, Godfather 3, stuff like that, but not a whole lot. Like, you look at the best picture winners or nominees, like, it's not like there's a usual suspects to or uh, he, uh, Pulp Fiction 2 or Forrest Gump 2 or... E.T. 2 or other stuff. <laughs> See now he's telling the kid to go over there so Yeah this is definitely his, his goodbye to him Simply his goodbye See he's definitely made his decision here See, the, the way he's doing with his hands, it seems like he does it when he's particularly nervous about something. And then the guy who doesn't like to be touched, the bit inclination of doing that is with his best friend here. Yeah, this is definitely a goodbye gesture as well. See, he's like kind of looking at him, kind of looking down because he knows you probably never going to see him again or what have you. You will be happy. <laughs> One of the kid kind of knows at this point. Maybe he doesn't fully realize it, but he'll definitely realize it later. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is John Ritter. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely knows he's not going to need money where he's going.
Kind of nice bit of scene because he had the scene before with the two of them where he's like, hey, what are you thinking? As if he's going to have deep thoughts. And he's like, mm, I love these potatoes. I love these french fries. But it does show a growth of the character where he has his nice speech with John Ritter that showcases he does have deeper thought process. And I think with the audience, they definitely know what's coming. It's just... The, the follow through of it. Nice, this is a nice uh, camera movement. Sort of the anticipation of the event that's going to happen. That's, you know, you're working up to it. Again, I would say, because I know he wanted me to do a review of this. Uh, I'll probably do a review at the end of the video if that's okay. That was just in one. Uh, go. And I have to say here, I enjoy the performances of the film, in particular Billy Bob Thorne. I think he does a really good job. I think it's definitely a movie that, while I do think it's a bit slow paced, it's a bit lengthy, I don't know if it needed two, over two hours to tell its story. For example, the whole love story went nowhere. Like, what happened to it? I mean, Whatever happened to that lady that gave him the flowers? We haven't seen anything, not like him saying any last words to her. So did that really need to be in the film when nothing came of it? Again, that seems like something that would be deleted. Especially when there's no culmination of it. Not even like a little sweet innocent kiss nothing of that nature so but that's one thing that could have been cut out because it doesn't really accomplish anything the band member the mates you never see them again so i, I you could have had a shortened scene where dry yokum is talking and having fun with the family and then he goes on the rampage and it's a shorter sequence so again there's, there's a few instances here and there i think you could be cut out but you know, the direction is basic, but, you know, worse for what it needs to be. The music. I think the music in these are definitely the more effective, the more subtle, eerie build-up of it all. Uh, Dwight Yoakam definitely plays a character you just outright hate. He does a good job acting wise as well. You not hate him because he's giving a bad performance. You hate him because that's the purpose of the story. You know the mom seems very sweet. The kid, good character actor, good kid actor. Like I said I, I see him in other stuff and I, I thought he was good in that. I'll, I'll believe you, you'll be relaxed for about forever. <laughs> Take your... <laughs> At least he's upfront and honest about it. <laughs> I am to kill you with it.
Mm. And yeah, we... We didn't need to see the gore in this. It's not that type of movie. The the sound effects sell it. Dwight Yoakam, like, his character's reaction was a bit weird. Like, you see the guy has a fucking blade. And you just... He told you he's going to kill you. You, you were freaked out before because he had a fucking hammer in his hand. Now he's got a blade and he says he's going to kill you. And he's like... Yeah, just, uh, no, well, he must have been really drunk. <laughs> Although I wonder if people like, I've been drunk, and I, even I would be like, fuck this. They even try to put up a fight. Bit weird. In a way, this kind of a levity where he's just calmly explaining what he did. Maybe it's not meant to be that way, but just the fact that he's... Mm-hmm, yeah. Just, you know, matter of fact, you know, giving it to you straight. <laughs> You've said thank you. And that's the old school phones with the cord and all. I'm sure, people today watch is like, what the fuck kind of phone is that? That's the kind of phones we had back then. You need your cord, no cell phones and shit. What we had back in the day. Ah, uh, that bucket of chicken wasted right then and there. Oh, well, you got the biscuits though. Well, I mean, definitely, you know, made the... The mom and the kid are definitely going to be happy from now on. Now we're back to like we were at the beginning, but things are going to end differently here. J.T. Walsh's character. But it does show he's a bit changed. A bit grown up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Definitely more knowledgeable. Definitely waiting for saying something. Sorry, I'm so silent about it. It was too big, huh? The world. But there are people that go out of prison and they just don't like it out there. They're just too comfortable with the structure of a prison. It's just too scary. But in prison, you're, you're told where to go. You get food, place to sleep. And, uh... 
you know. They, uh, <laughs> I think he just told you to shut the fuck off and piss off. Yeah, you need to like piss off, buddy. Break your neck while you're asleep. Or take that smell, smash it in the back of your head. And you never get the reaction. You never get the reaction of the kid or the mom or John Ritter or anything about what happened. Because that's up to your own, your own mind. <clears throat> your own mind, your own imagination. I just to himself, it's like it's... Despite having an abusive dad... Doing something horrible when he was 12. The tragic thing about what happened to his baby brother. He did the one. In my mind. One decent thing. Save a, a boy and his mother from. You know make them happy. I like this music too. This is a pretty good uh, score. So for one true misfit. If you're still watching. You're probably the only one. Maybe not even that. Maybe he's like, God, this guy's not talking much. What the fuck is this boring shit? But as we're at the end credits to give my review of the film. Okay, I was seeing if there's any more. F f okay. It was black for a second. I thought I was going to show more footage. I like the film. I like the performances. I think Billy Bob Thornton especially does a great job. Wonderful to see John Ritter once again. Uh, may he rest in peace. The, uh, the whole cast, uh, I have no issues with the 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 acting. The story, as it, it went along, it definitely became more interesting. Learning a bit of the backstory, the tragic history about his baby brother what happened with that definitely brought some nice uh, deep emotion you definitely felt the bond between him and the kid i would say the build-up of that was well done and the fact that if you did fully establish a connection between the two and what led to billy bob's character making the decision at the end you know the ending was tragic but sweet uh, yeah, I like the music. For the most part, I thought the score worked. I, I did think, really my one of my only issues is the pacing of the film. I don't think it need to be over two hours long. I, I keep, like an example, I mentioned this before, the whole thing with this like love story, but really nothing came of it. Like you never saw that girl again. After the giving them the flowers, that never was brought back up again. And filmed and deleted. I mean, if uh, Harvey Weinstein wanted 20, 30 minutes cut out, did that happen? Was that part of it? I don't know. Because it's kind of like, well, that led to nothing. So if that's the case, then just cut the whole thing. So I do think you could usually make this under two hours. Just my take on it, but um, it would have been interesting for me to see the kid and the mom and John, like maybe their reaction. On, on one hand, I get why. I get why you don't show it. Because it's more about the Carl character and you know, leave to the mind of the viewer what their reaction was, good or bad, or however. Well, probably good for uh, Lucas Blatt's character, the kid, but 
John Ritter be like, eh, but he understands. The mom, I don't know. But um, yeah, I mean, the film did well at the box office. Uh, I guess I assumed he won Best Actor, but no, apparently he was just nominated. Okay, I don't know who won for that year, but he was just nominated for it. I wonder who won Best Actor that year. But overall, I, I liked it for what it is. Benton, Arkansas. Dedicated to Jimmy Don Thornton. Hmm. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you guys later. Bye bye.